New at 7, the nation is days away from being able to test for COVID-19. An update this evening from the head of government. We take a closer look at how students of one school are learning from home as COVID-19 forces schools to be shuttered. Prison authorities suspend several activities to minimize risks associated with COVID-19. And body of an elderly man found near the West Bus Station. The ABS Evening News starts now. Local Evening News is brought to you by Nagico, local agents, Bryson's Insurance. Hello, good evening. Thank you so much for joining us for the Evening News here on ABS, Antigua's most trusted name in news. My name is Garfield Burford. And I'm Shermaine Jeremy, and a pleasant good evening to all of you joining us tonight, whether you're at home or online. And tonight, we begin with Antigua and Barbuda. We'll be able to test for the COVID-19 in a matter of days. This assurance from the Prime Minister, the Honorable Gaston Brown. Indeed, Rakib Aparicio has more on the major announcement. I did say during my national statement that, admittedly, they could be others and we will ramp up our testing capabilities. In fact, we believe that by the end of this week, we should be able to commence domestic testing. Addressing members of parliament on Tuesday, Prime Minister of Antigua and Barbuda, the Honorable Gaston Brown, says some of the equipment needed to test for COVID-19 is already in the country. The additional reagents and other things that are required have been imported into the country and expected to arrive here shortly. With regards to the quarantine facility based at the former Halberton Hospital, Prime Minister Brown says his government has taken the decision to allow for further expansions. We had a brief cabinet meeting in which we have voted an additional $1.4 million to further expand the facility. This expansion, he says, will allow for additional isolation and quarantine rooms and additional beds. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Brown says the status of the family of the country's first confirmed case will be known in a matter of days. The virus, he says, has already costed the government millions of dollars. Rakib Aparicio reporting for ABS News. Thanks, Rakib. Now, this developing story, Antigua and Barbuda is getting $500,000 from the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank to help with its preparations to fight the novel coronavirus, COVID-19. The announcement was made earlier today in a statement from the central bank. The sum total of some four million EC dollars is being distributed equally across the eight member territories of the Eastern Caribbean Currency Union. It will help governments in the purchase of testing and other critical equipment to detect, contain, and manage COVID-19. The funds are also to help purchase ventilators and drugs through the OECS Pharmaceutical Services, which is a regional mechanism set up for bulk purchases of drugs into the region. Chairman of the Monetary Council and Prime Minister of Grenada, Dr. Keith Mitchell, says COVID-19 presents an unprecedented situation and the OECS countries are very appreciative of the thoughtful and practical gesture by the ECCB. So a major developing story at this hour that all eight ECCB territories will be receiving a grant of 500,000 EC dollars from, of course, the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank to assist in their response to COVID-19. We'll keep across this major developing story for you. And let's tell you about this other developing story as well, because public safety authorities made the decision earlier this week to suspend a number of activities involving inmates. Prison Superintendent Lieutenant Colonel Eugene Phillips says the intention is to limit human to human contact. For example, the delivery of food to inmates from the outside has been suspended. Except for um, guidance from our doctor, if a person has a specific ailment or a specific condition that he needs to get food outside, special diet, we will facilitate that. Now, uh, the uh, prison chief says the chief, the, the measures, well, inmates working outside the prison walls will also be restricted. Only a small group, and we do have a farm outside of the prison compound. They're going out looking after our animals. But once they return, we take the normal precaution, make sure that they wash down, make sure that they are okay. Now, Lieutenant Colonel Eugene Phillip was speaking on Antigua Barbuda today this morning. The prison chief says measures are also in place for the officers. He says if an officer does not feel well, he is to call the hotline. 
And COVID-19 signs will soon go up at both bus terminals. It's an effort to educate the public about the coronavirus. Bus Terminals Division Supervisor Aishan Caesar says it's a joint decision made by the Bus Drivers Association and the Transport Board. He says you'll start seeing the signs tomorrow. The body is educating bus drivers on the virus. I call on my officers to be careful and you know, to take all the necessary precautions that has been you know, shown to us as to what are the right things to do. We have to interact. That is just the nature of our job. But yet, we still have to be cautious. All right, there you go. The, that's the police commissioner, Atlee Rodney, speaking about, of course, what the force is doing, the Royal Police Force of Antigua and Barbuda, joining the fight against COVID-19. According to uh, Commissioner Rodney, in order to do this, he says officers are being advised to take steps to protect their health in light of the spread of COVID-19. Meanwhile, appearing on Antigua Barbuda today, he adds the public also has a role to play. If they are saying that we are minimizing large gatherings, we expect the public to adhere to those type of decisions from the government. If, they, if it's, a, as we say, a state decision, uh, you know, official decision by the government, we are expecting the general public to adhere to that. So we don't have the situation where you have to be calling the police to disperse a large gathering. The commissioner says he's also asked the Ministry of National Security to provide officers with protective gear and other items so officers can effectively carry out their duties during the spread of COVID-19. Of course, uh, uh, the police commissioner speaking on Antigua Barbuda today, talking about his engagements with the Ministry of Public Safety. Shemaine? And Barbuda is extremely concerned about the possibility of COVID-19 reaching its shores. Member of Parliament with responsibility for Barbuda, Trevor Walker, outlined some of the concerns during the parliamentary session Tuesday afternoon. We have an abundance of yachts around the coast because, again, they see Barbuda as a safe haven, right? Because you know how it is there and so on. So we're very concerned with that. We have stretched our medical um, our personnel very thin. Walker commends gov the government for the work they have been doing to keep Barbuda safe. We have coordinated effort with customs that every boat now coming to Barbuda must get clearance in Antigua first. Walker also says Barbudan medical personnel are also being given the opportunity for additional training here in Antigua. Antigua and Barbuda's ambassador to the Organization of American States, Sir Ronald Sanders, says a planned meeting of the OAS in Washington this week is dangerous. The multilateral body is scheduled to meet at its headquarters in the U.S. Capitol Friday to, to elect uh, Secretary General. Jamie J. Roche reports on why some diplomats believe the meeting should be delayed. Jamie, over to you. Sir Ronald is among a group of ambassadors to the OAS who are calling for the vote to be delayed amid the spread of the new coronavirus. The concerned diplomats say the session will contradict health recommendations issued by the White House and the U.S.-based Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, or CDC. So Ronald says, quote, to proceed with this meeting in circumstances where the President of the United States has said that no gathering should be larger than 10 people and the CDC has warned against anything over 50 people is extremely dangerous, reckless, and irresponsible. Several nations are officially requesting a postponement of the meeting because many of the delegates are over 65 and have pre-existing health conditions. A release from the OAS says the United States Department of Health and Human Services will inspect the building to ensure it's safe ahead of the meeting. Tuesday, OAS General Secretariat spokesman Gonzalo Esparis said any vote delay must be enacted by the member states, who he says discussed a delay Monday but had not come to an agreement on changing the date. Antigua and Barbuda and St. Vincent and the Grenadines have jointly nominated former president of the UN General Assembly, Maria Fernanda Espinosa, for the post of OAS Secretary General. Peruvian Ambassador to the United States, Hugo de Zela, withdrew his candidacy Tuesday, making Espinosa the sole candidate going up against incumbent Luis Amalgo. Jimmy J. Roche, ABS News.
With the cruise industry on virtual lockdown, some vessels may be seeking berthing space in Antigua and Barbuda. That's according to a media statement from Global Ports Holding, which manages Antigua Cruise Port in the St. John's Harbor. It says some ships at sea will continue with their itineraries, and some may seek to dock in Antigua during a period where many cruise lines have suspended their operations. The statement affirmed that the statement affirmed that should such opportunities arise, they would first contact the local authorities. The company further states it will review its health and safety protocols in anticipation of the resumption of cruise visits to Antigua. It says it's committed to the health of passengers, employees, port stakeholders, and the entire Antiguan and Barbudan community. Well, in this ABS News follow-up now, we take a closer look this evening at what has emerged as the new learning reality for many students, virtual, virtual learning has become important as the threat of COVID-19 has forced the authorities to close schools until at least the 27th of March. Terry Andrew reports on how one secondary school is helping students learn from home. The corridor here at St. Anthony's Secondary School are bare. The classrooms, so where the over 300 student population used, are quiet. However, classes are still in session, although the students are at home. Teachers here at SAS are having classes online through a program called Information Now Chalkable. It allows students to continue their education, although not at school. It's really the student's platform. The students go in, the students actually can have a class with the teacher at the same time, you know, um, we, we, te we are currently for the next two days, we're in our testing phase and we actually are understanding from students, we do recognize the limitations that exist and we're working to sort those out so that when our term begins afresh, we can go full steam ahead. I mean, if this thing, if Corona lasts, Corona in Antigua lasts for the next two, three months, St. Anthony's will be open. The program takes attendance of every student in class and allows for discussion among themselves and with the teachers, as well as allowing the students to complete their assignments. Principal Joan bolas says this is a proactive move. So we thought we'd use this week to familiarize the students with online learning, distance learning, so that when we do reopen for term three, which would, should be next week, Wednesday, that they'll be so au fait with what's going on that we wouldn't have any hiccups. Classes, one after the other, just according to the timetable, are going on, again, not necessarily teaching a subject, um, like giving material or whatever for the particular subject, but during that subject period, teachers are going through the motions with the students to see how to do the different aspects of distance learning. The reality of prolonged school shutdowns as a precautionary measure could be crippling, but the principal believes a concerted effort must be made for this not to occur. My fear is that if we put education on hold for too long, then we are going to run into a lot more difficulties down the road. I, my heart goes out to the students who are waiting for CXC to um, make a decision as to when those CSEC and those CAPE exams will be held because of course then their life gets put on hold for those who are hoping to go on to college go on to university um, you know so it's it's going to have far-reaching effects and i just want us to keep going while the country continues to grapple with the effects of covid 19 these students are learning while staying safe no one knows how long this will be their reality terry andrew abs news and ABS News is keeping the public updated on all facts surrounding the new coronavirus. And it is well known that COVID-19 can be spread when someone touches a contaminated surface. ABS's Jamie J. Roche now reports on new research examining how long the virus can survive outside the human body. Jamie J. Roche joins us now in studio this evening with the latest scientific information at this point. Good evening, Jamie. Good evening. Researchers have found the new coronavirus can survive outside the human body for hours, underscoring the importance of proper hand hygiene and cleaning surfaces. Like many respiratory viruses, including the flu, COVID-19 can be spread in tiny droplets released from the nose and mouth of an infected person as they cough. One aspect that has been unclear 
is exactly how long the virus can survive outside the human body. The virus that causes COVID-19 is thought to survive for longer on hard surfaces than on materials such as cardboard. It is believed the absorbent natural fibers in cardboard may cause the virus to dry up more quickly than on plastic and metal. Researchers at the U.S. National Institutes of Health found the virus could survive in droplets for up to three hours after being coughed into the air. The study, which has been published in the New England Journal of Medicine, found the virus survives up to 24 hours on cardboard and two to three days on plastic and stainless steel surfaces. The findings suggest the virus might last this long on door handles, plastic coated or laminated worktops, and other hard surfaces. However, the researchers found copper services tended to kill the virus in about four hours. Cleaning is important since research shows coronaviruses can be inactivated within a minute by disinfecting surfaces with 62 to 71% alcohol or 0.5% hydrogen peroxide bleach or household bleach containing 0.1 sodium hypochlorite. Meanwhile, it is not yet clear how long the virus can survive on services like clothing, which are harder to disinfect. More studies are being done to see how changes in temperature and humidity affect the life of the virus. Back over to you. All right, and we're certainly keeping across all the developing stories in relation to COVID-19, Charmaine, just ensuring that our viewers are kept abreast of all the developments as they unfold. One of the big stories that we covered this evening is that Antigua and Barbuda is just days away from being able to test domestically for COVID-19. In addition, the Eastern Caribbean uh, Central Bank, the ECCB, has indicated that it will provide grant funding of $500,000 each to the eight member states of the, or member territories of the uh, currency union to provide relief and also to equip them to be able to respond to COVID-19. Stay with us for more of the stories that we're tracking for you, including this one. Body of an elderly man found in the vicinity of the West Bus Station. We'll tell you all about that, including all the very latest from the police. Plus, Care Project benefits from another act of goodwill. We'll tell you who the kind donor is. Upcoming on the ABS Evening News on air and online. Stay with us. At Najico, the things that matter to you matter to us. Like knowing you're covered when your house gets flooded. Getting your settlements quickly and fairly when a fire hits your home and making sure your business can keep going even after an accident happens on site. At Nagico, we're about much more than just insurance. We're about the big things and the small things that mean everything. Why not stay in, turn off the alarm clock, and sleep some more on your perfect mattress from Quartz? For the widest range of mattresses from the world's best brands, the best value guaranteed. Shop today and let our sleep experts help you to decide on the best option to suit your needs. At Quartz, we don't just sell mattresses. We're offering you the best night's sleep. So, sleep in a little on your new mattress from Quartz. Quartz, bringing value home. It's not easy getting rid of these types of greases every day. It's hard work. But if you really think about it, it's not really us doing the cleaning. At Total Import Supplies, we believe it's all about the product. Our extensive new line of ChemClean products are extremely concentrated, eco-friendly, effective, and guaranteed to make your life a whole lot easier. Whether you're cleaning at home, the office, or at industrial-type spaces, when it comes to food-based solvents, sanitizers, cleaners, floor care, commercial machines, and dispensers for laundry care, let the product do most of the work for you. Introducing the best brands in the cleaning business from ChemClean Limited. Available only from Total Import Supplies.
Welcome back here in tune with the ABS Evening News. The main opposition United Progressive Party, UPP, has published a list of recommendations which it wants the government to move immediately on. The party says the government should develop a COVID-19 national response budget. The UPP also says goods and services necessary for infection prevention and control should be exempted from Antigua and Bravida sales tax. The main opposition says these items should also be price controlled. ABST removal from telecommunication services to push self-isolation is also being recommended by the party. The UPP is also calling on the government to immediately, uh, to, to immediately evaluate infection prevention practices at elder care facilities. The party is also calling on public and private sector employers to exercise flexible vacation leave to facilitate social distancing to slow the spread of the virus. It is also recommending that the streets and pavements be infected daily. The UPP also says the government should take steps to increase local food production. And much of the usual hustle and bustle at the West Bus Station terminal came to a halt Wednesday morning after persons discovered the body of an elderly man. ABS's Rakib Aparicio was there at the scene and files this report. A numb silence shrouded the West Bus Station terminal as more and more persons became aware of the body of Kenmore Samuel resting just on the outskirts of the facility. The grim discovery made Wednesday morning left the deceased friends and family shocked. Many flocked to the area to confirm if the rumors were true. The elderly gentleman said to be in his early 70s, lying motionless in what is believed to have been his bed. He was one of the men who sought refuge beneath these two containers. His family told the police he had been suffering from a number of medical ailments which were not disclosed to media. Onlookers called out his name as representatives from Shafi's funeral home wheeled the body to its next destination. Investigations into the matter are ongoing. Rakib Aparicio reporting for ABS News. Well, the Ministry of Health joined with the CARE Project in receiving a donation of life's essentials. The heartfelt donation was made by the Police Cooperative Credit Union to the residents and staff of the CARE Project. ABS's Kim Emanuel Beard reports. To commemorate their 63rd anniversary of existence, the Police Cooperative Credit Union marked their milestone by giving to those in need in a time of crisis. President of the Police Cooperative Credit Union, Claudette Mason, recalls the first donation three years ago, the promise of returning, and the satisfaction of being able to fulfill that commitment. Mason assured the CARE Project that the institution will continue to provide charitable aid to residents and staff. Chairman of the credit union, Wayne Hope, facilitated the handing over ceremony, while manager of the credit union, Janella Henry, prayed for blessings over the proceedings. Hope outlined some of the good work the institution has been doing to make a difference in the community and says it's because of the love for the children why they are giving. About two weeks ago, we were at the police uh, training school, Wright George Training Academy, where we touched the ecology, where we planted some great trees, some fruit trees and some flowering plants. Uh, so we are somewhat touching the ecology and we have touched the ecology and we are touching the lives and souls and minds of our young people who are at this institution. Operations Manager at the CARE Project, Sandy Daniel, received the donation on behalf of the institution. The residents and daily clients here at the CARE Project have increased and we are very thankful for the amount of items that you have chosen to donate to us today. And given the fact of what is happening globally in terms of the coronavirus, we are very thankful for the additional items that I, I can also show you that the items presented today will be put to good use. Kim Emanuel Baird, ABS News. APUA continues the replacement of aged pipelines. These will be replaced with HDP pipes, which have a 50-year lifespan. It's very expensive. Just for one foot of four inch AGP pipe is 30 US. Put in orders and have to wait, you know, because of the cash flow, we have to wait. But in the near future, we're going to go wholesale on HDP pipe. 
This has been the delay in completing the project, which once complete will eliminate colored potable water. Martin says approximately $15 million of the $30 million loan will go towards the main lean replacement. He says Sir George Walter Highway and the Fries Hill Road are fully fitted with HDP pipe. Meanwhile, in the absence of rain, the potworks dam may soon be below extraction level. The level is just about four feet as of this morning, right? It depends on the rate that we take or we anticipate that we could have two to three weeks left at uh, Potworks. Residents are urged to practice conservation. Another update for you about COVID-19. We've been extensively updating you on all the developments as they unfold nationally, regionally, and internationally, of course, that dominating headlines. Let's tell you about this developing story now that Jamaica has recorded its first death from COVID-19. The patient died at the isolation facility at the Mandeville Regional Hospital. That's on the south central part of Jamaica. He died this afternoon. Uh, Jamaica now has 15 confirmed cases of COVID-19. Just more information on this patient who died this afternoon. He's a 79-year-old man who returned recently from New York in the U.S. He's from Lionel Town in Clarendon, another southern parish in Jamaica. He had diabetes and hypertension as well, so comorbidities or underlying conditions which also predisposed him and put him at higher risk. Meanwhile, as we said, Jamaica has now recorded 15 confirmed cases of COVID-19. That number was this afternoon 13. It's now moved up to to 15. There is an additional information to tell you as well that uh, to date six test results are outstanding. Six test results are outstanding. So one death, 15 confirmed cases, six test results. Outstanding. We'll keep across that developing story as well. Well, it's that time of the night when I tell you what to expect tomorrow on Antigua Barbuda today. Steve Friel and Junior will be with me, Ursula Charles Jr., and together we'll take you to the morning, 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. We've got Deverell Ford. We're learning how to play bridge tomorrow on the show. We also speak to Joanne Bullius Callias, principal at St. Anthony's Secondary School. She received the WOW Award for her contribution to education. And we hear from the principals at Automotive Arts. All that and much more tomorrow on Antigua Barbuda Today. And we have come to the end of the national segment of tonight's news. And coming up next, we have Terry Andrew joining the desk, and he'll be telling us all about sports. Right, Garfield? Absolutely. <laughs> Please stay with us. Um, there might not be a lot of sports happening per se, but there's a lot to report about all the adjustments and cancellations. He'll upcoming, he'll tell us about all the latest. Well, he has some basketball news to tell us about, not necessarily about action per se, but of course, he'll have some news on that. Stay with us. Stick around.